Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Once again welcome back to all my current followers and if you're new to this channel, hey, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, so yeah, if you're finding yourself at this video, chances are you want to know how to take a picture of Comet Neowise. Now Comet Neowise, it's literally, it's restored my Astro Mojo. I haven't seen a Naked Eye Comet since Hale Bop in 96-97 when I was, let's say, a lot younger. Now, not everybody has access to telescopes like these. So I will be teaching you, or going over, what you need and what you need to do to capture an image or capture a photograph of Comet Neowise using basic photography equipment. So, I've enlisted Luna for this video because I know everybody likes to see her. Um, let's get into it and we'll, we'll start with the equipment that you need. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want is a camera. Now this is my Canon DSLR, which is the 200D in a snazzy white colour. Everybody asks me about it with its kit lens, which is an 18 to 55 mil kit lens. Now this lens will give you pretty wide field views of the comet and I'll show an example. Now, this is, if you've seen my Twitter account or my Instagram, um, this is the lens that I took for that shot. Now I was mistakenly saying it was a 70 to 200 mil lens, but it's not, it's a Tamron 55 to 200 mil. Now, this is a zoom lens and it got me a little bit closer to the comet. And for the price that I paid, I cannot complain whatsoever. I got it from eBay second hand and it cost me £34 in total. So, as you can see, don't need anything too incredible with the lenses. But you might want a couple, so one for wide field and one for more zoomed in. Another absolute must have is a tripod. Now your tripod doesn't have to be too expensive but if you're planning on using it you know for a long time it's worth spending a little bit extra money. This is a KNF concept tripod and I think it cost me about £48 on Amazon. Um, it was like one of their prime deals but I have got a cheap and nasty tripod which as I've used for about five years. I think that cost me like 20 quid at the time. Um, Basically, you just want something that's going to keep your camera steady. Another thing you're going to need is a remote shutter. Now, this is actually an intervalometer, but I've got the ability to trigger the shutter on my camera by pressing this button. Now, you can get them pretty cheaply off eBay. Um, I think that costs like a fiver, five pounds. Um, and yeah, it basically, if you were to press the shutter on your camera, you get some shake, so you don't want that, so you want a remote shutter. Some new cameras have like Wi-Fi apps where you can trigger the shutter remotely from your phone. But yeah, like you could if you don't if you can't get one of these or you, you don't have one or you if your um, camera has an inbuilt timer facility, you could probably set a time the timer for like five seconds, so you press the shutter. It gives a five second gap for um, the camera to stop shaking and then it, you know, triggers the shot. That's another way of doing it as well. Reminds me, you may want an app or a map of the sky. Um, I use Sky Safari and this will help you find the comet. You can scroll around um, and you, it's even got a compass facility so that you can move the phone around and it will help guide you to where you should be looking. Which brings me to the last point. You you need a good view and of the northern horizon. So yeah, um, check out your northern horizon. Mine is absolutely lame. So find somewhere high, like high ground or something, or shoot out a window, like not hanging out of it totally, but you know, open the window maybe just to get some height. Yeah, those trees are totally in the way. 
Finally, this piece of equipment is optional, but you may want a pair of binoculars. So, the comet is actually naked eye visible as is, but binoculars are pretty good to help you find it when it's still light, or you know, the sun's only just gone down. So yeah, I always recommend trying to find it binoculars first so that you know where you're gonna try and shoot. And also, while your camera's shooting, if you wanna like enjoy just looking at the comet, yeah, binoculars is the way forward. I always recommend a decent pair of 10x50s, um, not just for Comet, this Comet, but for general astro work anyway. They're light enough um, to hold and be steady, but also they've got enough light gathering power to really enhance your view views of the sky. It's 100% true, planning is indeed key. Okay, so here's the part on the video where I explain exactly why preparation is key. So, the evening that I shot Comet Neowise, I literally made sure everything was ready. I got my camera ready, I got my lens ready, I got everything that I might need around me um, so that literally I could just pick up the camera and go. I then set an alarm for 2.30 and I woke up at 3.15 dazed and confused and I was like okay what's happened um, why hasn't my alarm gone off? The truth is my alarm did go off. Um, I've just realised this picture looks a little bit wonky but never mind. Anyway yeah I woke up at 3.15 dazed and confused and thinking whoa what's gone on. I'd slept through my alarm and just cancelled it in my sleep. So I'd instantly lost 45 minutes of imaging. Now if I didn't have everything ready, I hadn't like if I hadn't scoped out my position and made sure that I was actually going to see the comet, I'd have just been like, whoa, tonight is a bust. But it wasn't. I literally woke up, looked out the window, and there was Comet Neowise. And because I had everything ready, I literally put the camera on the tripod and started shooting. And I just got as many shots as I could. So yeah, planning and preparation is key. Be ready for any eventuality and if you're going to set an alarm, set like five and put it across the room so that you actually have to wake up and think, yeah, I've got to do something now. Okay, to make sure your camera's in, raw, uh, in manual mode, switch it to the M. And from there, you should be able to control exposure length, aperture, and ISO. So for aperture, little nose, I tend to find that two stops from the, the maximum, uh, so the smallest, because that's how wide open your lens can go. I find that that is the sweet spot. ISO, you might want to play around with. And exposure length, we can calculate from using the 500 rule, which I'll mention shortly. Now we also want to save in RAW, so if we go to Menu, Image Quality and select RAW as well. So what is the 500 rule? Now the 500 rule or the NPF rule, it tells you how long you can expose for before your stars in your image start trailing. Now to calculate that, I use an app called Photo Pills and you can enter your camera details and your lens length. So let's say, for example, I'm using my zoom lens at 200 mil. So it gives me a maximum exposure of 1.2 seconds or two seconds, depending on what rule you're using. I actually pushed it a little bit further in my image so you, can, you will see the stars have trailed just slightly. Um, but yeah, you can put all the details in. So I was using f5.6. And it will tell you exactly how long you can expose for. Okay, so one of the things I said to do was to take many sort of test shots and make sure that you were getting the right exposure exposure factors for your image. So let's take a look at the first two photos. So if we look over here, I shot this at ISO 
3200 with my wide angle, well, my, my wide 55mm lens at two and a half seconds. Now, that looks pretty good, except the histogram is quite far to the right. I actually felt that was a little bit overexposed. So, my next image is this one, which was shot at half the ISO, so ISO 1600 and slightly longer, so 3.2 seconds, and I felt that gave a much better result. And this was with one of the images that I actually published online onto my Twitter. So that's what I mean, play around with the settings and make sure you're happy with, you know, how they're turning out and how they look before you fire off a load of images and then find later that they're overexposed. The beauty of saving in RAW is that you can actually um, bring it back a little bit if you, you know, get it a little bit wrong. So don't, don't worry too much, but yeah, try and make some test shots and make sure you're exposure, exposing it correctly in the first place. So this was one of my images with the zoom lens. So you can see I shot this at ISO 1600 at 200mm f5.6 and my histogram is kind of in the middle, so 2.5 seconds and when I saw that on the back of the camera I was quite happy. So I stuck with it and I shot about 10 frames of those just like that and I'll be showing you how to stack them. Okay. So I'm going to show you now how to stack those files in Photoshop. So I've already pre-opened up Photoshop and I'm going to go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. Bring that window over here. So I'm going to go to Browse and I'm going to select, I'm just going to choose 4 because it's kind of a bit of a, like a labour intensive thing to do. I don't want to get this, let this video get too long and bore you all to death. So I've got my four images that I know of Comet Neo wise, and I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice Photoshop loads them into four different layers over here. Got to mention don't click like the auto align option because photoshop sometimes gets it wrong if you've got loads and loads of frames it may be worth using deep sky stacker to you know stack the comet uh, frames it has actually got a comet stacking mode but if it's just a few you can do it in photoshop now because i didn't align them you can see as i go through the layers comet has moved because i was on a static tripod now, the easy way to align these is to go first to the layer that's above the bottom one and go to the blending mode and go to difference. So let's take those off first and you'll notice everything goes black and white. So now I'm just going to nudge the frame using either the mouse or the keyboard, I'm using the keyboard, until pretty much it's as empty as can be. And then I'm going to go change the blending mode back to normal, and then I'm going to go to the next frame, and I'm going to do exactly the same, so difference, and then I'm going to move it till it matches. Don't worry that there's the odd spec, it's not a problem. Then blending mode back to normal, and then finally, top layer. There we go. And you can see how far the comet shifted in those four frames. So blending mode back to normal. And now I'm just going to crop it down a touch. All my layers now match and I'm going to select all the layers. So, so deselect, so there we go, 
I'm holding control and clicking each layer. I'm going to go to layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. Now if you've got lots of frames, this might take a little while. I'm going to go to layer, smart objects, and then stack mode. And I'm going to go, you can select whatever you like, but for this one, I'm going to select medium. Notice how it's a little bit grainy. And when this is done, it should be a lot smoother. So instantly, so if I undo, a bit grainy. If I redo, less grain. And from here, you can just edit the image as you like. It's up to you how you want to edit it. Um, and then you can file, save as, um, and do it that way to export it whenever you're done. So after all that, I think you deserve a pat on the back and a well-deserved rest. Now, here are my images that I ended up with of Comet Neowise. So, I hope you've enjoyed that video and I hope it's helped in your quest to capture an image of Comet Neowise. Most importantly, just get out there, look up and have fun. Comic Neo Boys won't be back and grace our skies for another around 6,700 years. So literally get out there, have a look while it's still visible. It's visible for a little while, I think till the end of July, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. So hopefully, weather permitting, we'll have a good few chances to get some awesome images of this amazing comet. I look forward to seeing all your images and let me know if you've got images already in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.